Hello, so you're probably coming after the video about this. Well, if you haven't seen that, go and check it out. This is just a quick video. Well, it's not a quick video. This is quite a long one about fixing a couple of problems with this. This wasn't the only problem I've had with getting this thing going. It's actually been a bit of a nightmare. It just uh, seems that uh, the more it was uh, running over the first day after not being run for a long time, it just, things started going wrong. And uh, yeah, this was probably the most prominent one. It took me a good uh, day to figure this one out. It would, somebody might have found it out quicker, but I didn't. I also had a couple of problems with uh, the uh, CIA chips, the interface chips. Uh, that's the thing that makes the keyboard work, but actually that ended up being reasonably simple to fix. The thing is, if you if the keyboard's unresponsive or a bit glitchy with the notes or the cursor seems to flash a bit, uh, that's what the telltale sign with that was. Um, I just desoldered the CIA chip and managed to fix that. And that was on a new Commodore motherboard because... Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've had, a, I've had a bit of a nightmare with this. I ended up having to go and pick up another Commodore motherboard that was on eBay that was 45 minutes away. I managed to find a cheap one and ended up resorting to that. But the other problems, like I mentioned, were the screen in this one and the power supply, which ended up tripping all the fuses. That's in the main video. Um, also, by the way, this you can play on this weekend if you want. Uh, the Micro Museum, when that comes to open, which is a computer museum, pretty much next door to this museum is not obsolete, then uh, maybe this sort of might be sat here for residencies and stuff because, you know, you don't want don't want too many, you know, a bit like computer, maybe they've got one in here there. I, I haven't been there for a little while, but we'll figure that out uh, when, they, when they open. But for now, I think I'll just wire this up to play synth cart, probably, so you can play on the synth SID chips. But by the way, there's a few tickets left for this Sunday and there's plenty more Sundays and stuff and the links to get tickets and information on the museum are available below. And also to answer a frequent question, on Sundays there's free parking all around the museum so it's quite it's quite easy and the train station is not that far away. Just quick answers because I get that and those both asked quite a bit. I'll pop it on the website soon. Anyway, let's take it away. This is a problem that I had to solve that um, I didn't put into the main video because it was so long and tedious and I needed to get to the music really quick. So uh, I figured I should just talk about this problem and uh, show you uh, sort of the solution and stuff. Because I don't do a massive amount of repair repairs. Uh, when I need to, I sort of just um, try and be pragmatic about it. And sometimes it works. A lot of the time it works now. Which is uh, after quite a bit of practice, after being a bit of a plonker for, you know, I am a plonker so I don't really know all this stuff. But I figured, getting down to the bottom, and I've learned some things today, after eight hours of trying to get this thing to work, uh, I think I found the problem. So you see that over here the Commodore 64 loading screen is there. It's there. It's doing its thing. Which is amazing. It's working, finally. And, funnily enough, about eight hours ago, it was working as well. And, um... I don't know what happened. Basically what happened was uh, this is a new bread, this is a new motherboard in there. Well, not a new one, a different one that uh, has got SID chips in. Check out the other video if you haven't already about why and what and how and where. And um, this is, yeah, it's a different board. And uh, basically this morning, I finally got it working with the original board, the one without the SID chip. And if you can see here in this picture, actually, you'll notice that the screen actually covers a larger space. I'm trying to figure out why that is, uh, do they run at a, a different speed? Uh, it doesn't really make sense because, oh, maybe somebody has an answer for that. But uh, with this one, I, got, I plugged it in, I swapped it over and I plugged it in. And five minutes after I plugged it in, the screen turned off. It just turned off and it went pew, pew. And it was like, oh no, oh no, the screen's turned off, this is awful. I've got to do a video and it's, it's just broken, completely. Uh, so I just, um, uh, yeah, figured I needed to sit down and fix it because the most embarrassing thing would be that I had broken an Educator 64, which would have been, <laughs> would have been a little bit embarrassing. So, uh, yeah, uh, what was the problem and wow did I get to fixing it well it was an eight hour thing maybe not eight hours I think it was about six hours in the end so what I started with was the screen wasn't working that was off it was like blank there was nothing and I didn't know what to what to think so uh, what I did first 
after sitting and going, why, why, why is it broken? What I did was I went and got, I was lucky because I've got another uh, Commodore PET that's a similar size to this. It's the same size, it's an 8096, I think. It's over here. It's, um, what is it? What is it? Uh, the 4032, sorry. So the 4032 is the same case, it's just got a different, uh, different keyboard. And that means that the actual monitor is exactly the same. It's the same thing. Uh, this is the same as the, it's down here right now because I've just got out of the way. This, the, very sorry, it's an absolute tip in here because I've been fixing this and it's just, it was clean this morning and now it was just completely turned upside down. So what I did was, well, the, the wire coming from this, which is this one here, uh, the uh, power wire, this is the brown one, I checked that one first in here and it said like about 21, 21 volts AC, which is what these uh, take. I double checked that with the voltage readings on that other Commodore, it was right. And then I uh, basically unplugged this and plugged it into the Commodore PET uh, motherboard because it's the same thing. And um, lo and behold, the Commodore PET screen came up onto here and then I got the other one, the other monitor and plugged it into there and it was blank. So that meant that it wasn't this, this, the monitor was not the problem. That was, that was knocked that out. And then the next thing I did was got this TV screen. You'll see it's out of focus, out of sync and stuff, but you'll see that the loading screen's there. What I did was, yeah, just double check. The actual motherboard was still working because it just turned off five minutes after I didn't touch it. It wasn't me that burned something. It just, it just died five minutes after. So I plugged in the audit thing. It was doing it, it was working. So that was working and that was working. I checked the voltages here across with the other one and this was working. Obviously this is slightly different because it sends out five volts DC, nine volt AC. That goes over to the Commodore 64 board and then there's a 21 something volts that goes AC that goes up to the monitor and that's what comes out of there. So that was fine, that was fine, that was fine. That meant that the main, the problem, either A was how this was talking to this, or it was this. This is a board that is completely personal to this um, type of machine. This is an Educator 64, well it's a 4064, and funnily enough, um, apparently they're supposed to have custom kernels that make it um, black and white, but if you see here, it hasn't because I actually swapped the kernel over to this board. It's right here. It says 901227-03, which is actually the third revision of the Commodore 64 kernel. It's exactly the same. So uh, yeah, the story with these ones is that uh, they, I've heard from Dave, time of software, is these were made from out of warranty repairs that they got sent back and then you know, they fixed them and shoved them in these. So they're all different. And this one's even different to most of them that Dave has seen apparently. So this is a, yeah, this is just a normal Commodore 64 kernel, but you'll see that it is actually uh, monochrome instead of grayscale, uh, which is a bit annoying. I wish it was grayscale. You'll, you'll, you'll figure out why soon, but actually maybe it won't be visible at all. There's a thought. So it got me going over to this board right here. That is, uh, yeah, this is, what this does is it takes the uh, Luma uh, signal, not the color signal, it all ignores the color signal, just takes the Luma signal, which is the sync and Luma, goes into here, and then what that does is it goes out as, um, as the video signal, horizontal sync, and vertical sync, that keeps all of it in sync on the screen, and that's what the Commodore PET requires, is that. So it needs, it needs to convert this, into that. So the first thing I did was get out my cheap and cheerful nearly out of batteries uh, cheapo oscilloscope. Uh, you could get these from Amazon for like, I, th I think it was like 50 pounds or something like that. And I uh, measured the, hor it's got labels HV and VID on this. I measured the horizontal sync, which is this one. As you can see, uh, you've got that. But when I was looking at it first, it was actually, oh, oh, there's a reflection. But when I was looking at it first, it was actually just high. It was a line up here. And then the vertical, you can see that there's a little bit of flippy fluffing around. That means it's doing something. It's a lot longer than the horizontal sync because obviously you would, you need to flick, out, flick down less times than you need to flick along. So that's doing something. It looks like there's some signal there, right? You can see it kind of flippy flopping around, doing its thing. And then the video sync, which looks like that, it's an absolute mess. That's kind of like the information being like, hello, 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 look at, look at all these, look at all these information. So 
what it was actually giving me was oh, all this information. But the vertical sink, that was actually just a solid line there. You wouldn't see any of this flashing around. And then this horizontal sink was just a solid line at the top as well. They were both exactly the same. And that was called, that's called high. They were stuck high. And uh, the first thing I did uh, after that was uh, go uh, to the figure out where they were coming from. And they were coming from these two uh, chips. Luckily, I had these two chips around, which is mad. The um, 74 LS221 and the 74 uh, LS123. I think one of them's some AND gates and the other one's a weird Schmidt trigger thing, a majiggy, I can't remember. So immediately what I did was I took these out, I desoldered them, put sockets in, and put the put alternative ones in there. That didn't make a difference, so I put the old ones back in, and yeah, left it like that. Then I ended up just because I was I was a bit desperate and stuck, so I I took the same I took this one out as well. I re-socketed it and did the same. And luckily I had this one as well, but I'm not sure whether it was the same as this. So I'm not sure, but I put that back in. What I did after that was I was thinking about these weird capacitors uh, and wondering what they were doing. They were smoothing stuff out, but maybe they had gone weird. So I swapped one over, which was this one, and it didn't do anything, so I decided to stop that because I figured they're probably not doing anything. At this point, I didn't really understand where the horizontal and the vertical shift, where the horizontal and vertical sinks were coming from. So uh, I thought maybe the Schmidt trigger was because I don't under, I don't know this kind of circuitry and stuff. I thought maybe they were making oscillators to make it in time, but then I was thinking, how would that work? Because then all of the screen would go out of sync. So that was that. So um, then I went over and had a look at the video stream, uh, which, is, which is here. It looks like that. It's all a bit, if I turn it up, it looks basically like a messy, there's always a mess on top, and then there's, uh, yeah, there's a low, and there's a high, and there's this and that. I, I'm go I was gonna talk about not understanding the bits, but I figured out over that, throughout the day, what this board does, and obviously, if somebody knows what this board does, then it's quite obvious. But what this does, is it basically splits that video signal off, and what it does is it, it splits it off into the video data, which is all the squiggly bits on top, and then the vertical and the horizontal sink, you can see the horizontal sink is there. Well, it kind of makes that, oh no, into a horizontal sink thing. Ah, that's the one problem with these things is they, they break all the time. I did fix this, but it broke again. After that, I stared at the back of this board and uh, I found this. So the video signal, let's say V, this is going off. Uh, this is not 100% the circuit. I'm just doing it off my head, what I saw and then I'll let you know. So this is the wire that went off and what this did is it went over here into a transistor, I think. Yeah, it went into a transistor. It did a load of gobbledygook and I was following through with the probe. I was measuring here, there was still noise. I was measuring, I think it was going to five volts and then out there maybe. I was measuring here and there was still noise. And then I was going to an AND gate, I think. And then I was measuring here, there was still noise. And then I managed to measure it uh, all the way up to the output and yeah, that was working. I was like, why? well, that's working, that's weird. And this is not what the circuit is, but I was just following through, looking for the components and see where it was going. Also, this one also goes through a, um, through a potentiometer that actually goes to ground. And what this does is it reduces the uh, level of the video signal, actually there's a, there was a diode here as well. What this does is it reduces the video signal enough to get just below the threshold of I think the AND gate to actually mean that you it ignores the clock, it ignores the weird clock frequencies. So the video signal here was like and when you fiddle with this, it actually goes down and it ignores all this stuff and it only boosts this wiggly, wiggly, wiggly stuff. So uh, you're pulling it down and kind of just teeter-tottering it upon the threshold at which the uh, AND gate, I think it was, uh, kind of ticks over and goes, yeah, hello, hello, hello. So you end up with like this. Which was uh, quite interesting. I didn't know that. I mean, I don't know these kind of circuit circuits, so it was a fun bit of doing. So that was all working. The video signal was going off along quite nicely. And then there was another aspect to the circuit. So this wasn't only doing this, it was going somewhere else as well, uh, I found. 
but it didn't immediately make sense what I was doing because it was a little bit counterintuitive to me until I kind of went through the paces. So what it looked like was there's a there was a diode pointing this way. It was pointing down to this. And then there was five volts and there was a resistor and that was going here. And then there was, what was the? And then that was going off to a uh, transistor. So after looking through this, I measured with my probe here and I was getting, I think I was getting high. I think I was getting like plus five volts. So that's, it was just solid. So there was a problem around here. This was supposed to go off and I figured out afterwards what this does is it, it makes the horizontal and vertical sync via whatever, some some clock dividers or some stuff. Uh, so there was a problem here. So what I did was I changed this transistor, which was a BC, uh, what was it? It was like a BC uh, 237. I swapped that, I changed that to a uh, 2M3904, obviously, the fave. And then, yeah, it was, uh, and then I spent hours wondering why it still wasn't working. And guess what it was? The brightness was down on the TV. Uh, uh, what a plonker. So that's what I did. I don't know whether that's any use. That's just blabbing, but it was weird. Looking at the circuit, so what it does is it splits it off. And every time it goes to ground, it sends a pulse. Well, down here, these tiny little thin bits of the signal. That's why it reads it and it actually sends these out here. They go like blah, 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 and that goes out and ends up becoming the vertical and horizontal sync. And then this goes over via this resistor to kind of adjust uh, the threshold at which it goes bright and dark because it's only a monochrome screen and that goes off and through this stuff to make the uh, video signal. I don't know. I don't know this kind of circuitry so I just thought it was cool. But yeah, that's uh, that was about six or seven hours of my life figuring out that. I'm sure somebody would have done it quicker, but you know, I'm, I'm, I've learned now. I've learned, I've learned it. Lovely.